it's time for another honest church review. I am 3 Plus Key, your favorite social worker. Welcome back. I'm here to encourage you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health, and of course, persistent education. Now, I'll tell you where I went today. I'll tell you where I went today. I went to Revive Church in Missoula, Montana. I noticed uh, when I was traveling a few weeks ago, there's also another Revive in the Bitterroot. Um, and I went there. I just checked out the outside a little bit. But this one is on Latimer Street in Missoula, Montana. Two people who are members there like the idea of church swaps and invited me to attend um, and an additional person as well that works with some of the uh, parishioners, another another social worker friend of mine um, said that Revive may be a church that would be agreeable to my sensibilities. So here we go. It started off, I I walked in the door, there was a gentleman there to uh, greet me and open the door for me. There were some ladies talking, handing out uh, programs as it would be, and then a third person, uh, Mike, I'm gonna call him Big Mike, I don't know, but uh, a fellow named Mike greeted me and my friend let us know there's hot chocolate and tea and coffee right over there help yourself also the bathrooms hello are this way and then the sanctuary is right ahead have a good time enjoy the service so uh my friend and I we walked in there were a few people there. I would I would call the population maybe 150 people or so. Everyone looked very relaxed. I tend to take note how are people dressed. So uh, right out the gate, I noticed that it was racially diverse, which is difficult to achieve in a homogenous town such as Missoula, Montana. Forever and always, I will seek that out <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons, right? So I noticed that um, the congregation was diverse racially, but also by ages as well. Uh, you know, like I know churches can have an older population, maybe like a 30s, 40s population. That's my jam, and uh, sometimes you have a lot of young families. I've definitely been to churches, all three types of churches. Um, and uh, it was a, a real healthy mix. I dare say it was probably one of the most diverse gatherings I've been to in Missoula in 20 years. It was a little bit of everything, a little bit of everybody. And so, um, you know, it, it started, they had several introductions. They started with a lady saying, we've been praying for a conversion van because so-and-so is disabled. And I just wanted to praise the Lord. I will say I have never been to a church that opens with the praise from a parishioner. She was just a regular, we'll call her Miss Mary. Miss Mary just got up there and she just wanted to tell her story just right quick and say, thank you, Lord. And everybody was welcome to uh, praise the Lord with her. I really appreciated that. Um, obviously, you know, the preacher is the one with, with, the, with the word we, we came to listen to, but I find it very encouraging to hear how the Lord is working in everybody's life. And the fact that I didn't have to somehow make my way over to Miss Mary and learn about her personally 
that, that this information was available to me to then contrast against my own thanksgivings in, in, in my own life. Praise God. Right. Um, so that was the first thing that happened. And I really appreciated that. And then they had um, two teenagers. I'm going to be honest. I don't remember what they were talking about. But what I remembered was how refreshing it is to see two non-socially awkward teenagers get up in front of the congregation and praise the Lord, whatever they were talking about. You don't see that very often, too. Sometimes you see maybe the awkward kind of a teen. Don't at me. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but just regular run-of-the-mill, you know, um, just praising the Lord. I have a strong appreciation for that. I said it before and I'll say it again. God doesn't look one way. His people don't look one way. Some of us have a little razzle-dazzle. Some of us put a little sauce on it. And that needs to be included, too. Some of us are straight-laced and we're by the book. That needs to be included as well, but there are multiple ways to be when the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. Amen? So that happened and then we started to my jam, pun intended, the worship music. When I tell you, I wiggled a hip. I like that music. I wiggled a hip. I clapped. I got to I got to clapping. I looked at my friend next to me. <laughs> saw him singing. It was a time. It was a time we had uh with the with the with the worship songs. I really appreciated it. Sometimes you were doing a little hey, a little bop and then they would, you know, contrast that, juxtapose it with with one of those soft you know, bring you down a little bit, tight jam, then pick you right back up, baby. Pick you right back up. Strong appreciation for that worship. I loved it. I loved it. Um, and then after that, we we got into the sermon. Oh, before we did that, there was a, a little five-minute meet and greet. Shout out to Cindy. Cindy came on over. We don't know Cindy, but Cindy, we know Cindy now. Shout out to Cindy at Revive Church. You know, we talked about how long we've been in uh, Missoula, what we like about Missoula, had a little jokey joke right quick, and uh, moved on. And typically, as outgoing as I am, sometimes I'm, I don't really like, want to have a conversation. Whether I felt like that or not, I felt like uh, the next time I see Cindy in the streets, I'm going to say, I'm going to walk up to her and say hi. I liked her a lot. I liked everybody I came across um, on that day. Everybody was very friendly. While we were worshiping, somebody knew my friend. Actually, I don't know. I should I should ask him. Uh, Mike, remember Big Mike? Big Mike came up and, and whispered something uh, to my friend that, that I came with. Wonderful, very welcoming. I would I would say that, and that is extremely important. Hello, in the church, <laughs> okay. You should be not weird about it because we've been there too, right? People just like talking to you for no good reason, have nothing to say. Strike a convert, like a, a a literal conversation with somebody. Don't just how was your week? That's my least favorite question ever in church. How was your week? You know you have my phone number, Tabitha. Why didn't you call me on Wednesday? Now we get in here. You don't care. That's okay that you don't care, but I don't want to uh, pretend, but I didn't get that feeling. Uh, people were very welcoming, and I had a strong appreciation. I'll, I will most definitely be back. I'll say that much. Anyway, so after the meet and greet, we get up. We get down to the to the sermon. And the sermon series, I gather, is called The Powerful Prayers of Paul. The Powerful Prayers of Paul. And there were six points to the powerful prayers of Paul. A, B, C, D, E, and F. And one thing 
um, that we were really focusing on again and again is praise. I'm going to give you my takeaway up front, just in case you don't want to go through all this. My takeaway, the one thing I was really convicted of is that you praise the Lord out loud. We love to say, well, I'm going to praise him in my heart. The Lord knows my heart. The Lord knows how I feel. But I'll riddle you this. Literally anyone in your life, how do they know you love them? You tell them and you show them. If you just show them, you not telling them, just in case you have somebody like this in your life, if you just show, just demonstrate to somebody that you love them, and you don't actually tell them, hey, I love you. I really like when you do this, that, or the other. They may not be receiving it, your praise and your adoration and your love in the way that you think they receive it, right? Likewise, then, if you just tell them and you never do any demonstration, we all know people like that. I love you. And it's like, how? Where? Who? Who? You know, say they with the Lord, baby. You got, I mean, you got to say it and act on it. Act like it. Say it and act like it. And so you praise him out loud. Outwardly acknowledge what is going well in your life, what you are learning, the lessons that are given to you. Give him the glory. How can you give him glory in your heart? That was the takeaway. And I felt very convicted about that. Because I feel like um, out of all the talking I do, how much of it is outward praise of the of the Lord? I can tell you everything that's going great. How often do am I giving that praise to the Lord? It's because of you that my life is splendiferous. Amen. How often? So anyway, back to the sermon. The powerful prayers of Paul, uh, point A, praise changes your outlook. Praise changes your outlook. The accompanying verse is Isaiah 61, 3, which reads, and provide those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a, a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Again, praise changes your outlook. You're able to um, participate and, and point out the positivity in a situation. Do you like that alliteration? Shout out to Jasmine Cro Crockett. Uh, praise changes your outlook. You can point out and participate in the positivity of the goings on in your life. Amen. Also, to cover that point, Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 28. We were, uh, the, the pastor, excuse me. The pastor was talking about how Paul and Silas were thrown into jail for spreading the gospel. Verse 25 says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Verse 27, the jailer woke up when he saw the prison doors open. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The commentary on that, the jailer drew his sword to kill himself because jailers were responsible for their prisoners and would be held accountable for their escape. Usually a jailer would be put to death for failing to keep the prisoners locked up. Hmm. So you had them in prison and they're out here singing. 
praising the Lord for their circumstances. Certainly praising their Lord, praising the Lord because they had the Holy Spirit in them. They were wanting to tell people about our Lord Christ that brought them such joy, such satisfaction, such hope for the eternal. They didn't even mind being in jail because of it. In 2024 terms, they were standing on business. They were fine with that. Excellent. Praise will change your outlook. Pointing out and participating in your positivity is definitely the way to go. Point B, when you have a song, you can sing it anywhere. And it's just like, you know what kind of just came to mind right now? You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Sing it. Please don't take my sunshine away. Now, when you hear that song, many of us, not everybody, but many of us have a person in mind. Probably a child, a grandparent some type of loved one when we hear that you are my sunshine song. So anytime it comes on and it's tattooed in our hearts, we hear it, we're reminded of the person. So is, so is uh, praise. When you have a song of praise on your heart, you are my sunshine, praising your loved one, this person that you love so much, when you have a song of praise for the Lord on your heart, you can sing it anywhere, anytime. You can engage in praise with anyone at any moment, believer or not. You can tell them how good God is to you. It's like if you have a good a, a, a nana, shout out to my nanas, grandma, mammy, whoever. You have a, you have your nana. You could tell somebody about your Nana and how she makes you cookies. You could do that. You could also do that regarding the Lord as well. You could tell people, you talk about your Nana, the number of Nanas I know about. Comment below something great about your Nana. Go on and do it. You know you want to. Okay? The no, the, the amount of information about, about the, the, the multitudes of Nanas that I have is ridiculous because Nana's are lit. You know who else is lit? Christ. You can you can praise the Lord to, to anybody as well. Like you talk about your Nana's cookies or how she made you a quilt. Shout out to Nana. Shout out to Christ. So that's point B. When you have a song, you can sing it anywhere. Point C. Praise brings God's intervention won't he do it they broke out the uh god is good all the time all the time god is good they broke that out today can't do that anywhere not everybody knows about it did you know that not everybody knows about the god is good all the time all the time god is good not everybody knows that joint broke that out today Right about right here in point C, praise brings God's intervention. The accompanying scripture is, uh, let's see, Second Chronicles, verse 20, excuse me, chapter 20, verses 21 and 22. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men, to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. 
as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated as they were praying in one location, praising the Lord over here. Look at it. Clock that T over here. Praising the Lord. Thank you. You are an awesome Lord. You are a wonderful Lord. You are a Lord of protection. Lord, you bring us comfort over here. Lord, here's that. Okay. Over here, defeat. Defeating enemies. Defeating enemies. You ever had somebody take up for you? Obviously, right? Most of us. Some of us. Okay, some people are... Some people have been doing what they were supposed to be doing in life. Some of us have not always done, amen, what we were supposed to be doing. And we're just getting around to doing the right thing now, right? So sometimes in life, we've had to have people take up for us. How does that happen? You build a relationship. You get in with somebody. When I was... um. 16, shout out, shout out to my, my foster dad. It's the only, only dad I really had. Um, I got accused of plagiarism because your girl can write, your girl can write an essay to this day. But when I was 16, I was in a particular English class with a particular teacher and, um, she called my dad and said, Lakeith is in trouble. She plagiarized this essay. My dad said, how do you know? She said, uh, well, she used the word poignant. Ain't no way Lakeith can use the word poignant. And my dad says, well, not only, <laughs> it's a funny story. Not only did she write it, she was talking. I watched her write it. She was talking the whole time she was writing it. Turns out, I have a gift for writing, but that's beside the point. My my dad, all the all the praise. I love him so much. I loved him then, as my as my foster dad. We had that relationship of positive, consistent, positive messaging between us. So when I didn't even know that this phone call was being made about me to get me into trouble he went into action i praise my dad over here over here he's defeating the enemy that i didn't even know existed amen so what was that point again point c praise brings god's intervention intervention developing that positive relationship with the lord it is necessary Point D, your prayer can become a praise. Are we talking? Are we talking yet? Your prayer can become a praise, even just leaning on somebody. You ever have that? You have a friend? Y'all get together, you just like vibe out. You know, you, you, you know each other, you trust each other, you know each other, you trust each other, you trust each other, you know each other. You get to talking, you develop a relationship, you have each other's backs. You communicate. What is prayer? Communication with the Lord. Talking, talking, building, vibing, chilling together, getting to know one another, each other deep down character. This type of thing. What drives you? What moves you? What motivates you? That's you with the Lord. That's that connection, baby. You pursuing the Lord. Because he's definitely pursuing you. That's a praise in and of itself. The beauty of that relationship. The fact that I can even come to you. The fact that I even trust you. You don't tell everybody your secrets. Do you? In and of itself, it's a praise that you have this type of relationship with your bestie, BFF, your man, my man, my man, my man. What about Christ? 
You feel me? The relationship alone, the level of communication alone, that's praise, pure praise right there. That's point D. Your prayer can become a praise. Point E, praise always, all caps. <laughs> praise always. To go uh, with that, accompanying that is uh, the scripture, Psalm 145, verses 2 and 4, which read, it's from David. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. Great are you, Lord. Remember that one? It's your breath. Hey, turn up. Great are you, Lord. That's the song that went with this one. Let's read it again. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. The commentary how do we tell the next generation of God's power? We begin by making church attendance and biblical education central in the experience of our own children. Amen. We can also tell our stories of believing in Jesus. When did faith in Christ become personal and vivid for you? Use family meals and social events to share about Jesus. Talk about your experiences Show your family and others in your circle of influence how God helps you through each day. Again, back to Nana's cookies. You praise her. I'll use me as an example. I love to talk about what a great friend group I have. Amazing people. Amazing people surrounding me. To these amazing people, do I tell them about the amazing one? Capital A, capital O. The amazing one. How often am I sharing my relationship with Christ, with my loved ones, the way I talk about my loved ones to Christ? And you, friend, what about you? You feel me? What about you? Praise always, generation to generation, make it a thing. I asked somebody today, a little 18-year-old uh, girl, what did you learn today? And she said, to know, to know her worth, she's going through a, 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 a messy breakup, messy breakup with a boy. And she learned, she learned that today. She uh, had tears in her eyes. She was crying, upset. I ask questions of the day all the time. You can see them on this channel. What is the question of the day? Do you have self-pity? When was the last time XYZ? I love me a question of the day. How is the Lord working in your life? When is the last time... You feel me? This is why this sermon was so convicting to me. It's one thing to get in front of a camera, talk a good game, point people to Christ. It's one thing, but what am I doing? You feel me? When the cameras go off, what am I doing first thing in the morning? What are you doing right before you go to bed or as you're closing your eyes, as your eyes are closed, falling asleep? What are we doing if not praising the Lord, you feel me? I, we got to get it together, bro. Point E, praise always. And finally, point F, 
praise with your whole heart. Remember Charles Spurgeon? He said, in everybody, oh, there's a hole. There's a God-shaped hole in everybody's heart. And we will just fill it and fill it with all, a little bit of weed, some food, fast food usually, right? Exercise, alcohol, sex. Oh, we'll fill that hole up. And then it drains. It's a God-shaped hole. Like the little three-year-olds, you know, the little, it's like a little box with cutouts of different shapes on each side. But the, the one with the square, you can't put the circle or the heart or the diamond into the square cutout. That's its own hole. We have that in our hearts for the Lord. The Lord is all only the Lord fits there and there will be an emptiness in your heart without him. So again, point F is praise with your whole heart. The accompanying scripture is Psalm 9 verses 1 through 10. Psalm 9 verse 1. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Commentary. One of the natural results of praising God is telling others about him. When we know God is wonderful, loving, and kind, that knowledge inspires us, us inspires in us a desire to tell others about him and encourage them to praise him with us. Verse two, or verse two, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. Verse four, for you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. The commentary, God upholds our just cause. He is our vindicator, the one who clears us from criticism and justifies us before others. In this life, we may face many injustices. We may be falsely accused and misunderstood by friends and enemies. We may not be truly appreciated by others for the love we show. The true value of our work and service may not be duly rewarded. Our ideas may be ignored, but God is to be praised for he sees and remembers all the good we do. And it is up to him to decide the timing and the appropriateness of our rewards. If we do not trust him to vindicate us, then we will be susceptible to hatred and self-pity. Why don't they like me? If we do trust him, we can experience his peace and be free from the worry of how others perceive and treat us. Verse 5. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them, uh-oh, has perished. Okay, talk about it. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Verse 10, finally, verse 10. Those who know your name, trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Run it back. Those who know your name, trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. The commentary. God will never forsake those who seek him. To forsake someone is to abandon them. To seek God means to reach out to him, to surrender our hearts and minds to him. We find him in the Bible, in prayer, and in fellowship with others. We more fully relate to him through the work of his son, Jesus. This promise does not mean that if we trust in God, we will escape loss or suffering. It doesn't say that anywhere. It means that God himself will never leave us 
no matter what we face. Friend, I want to encourage you today. Whatever you're going through, assess your part and repent. Repent means to turn away from. Don't do that. You know what I'm talking about. The thing, that, that the one thing that you, you have big feelings about, don't do that again. Tell the Lord, I'm not going to do that again. And then say, I'm sorry. Ask for forgiveness. Confess, repent, ask for forgiveness. And then praise him. He is a mighty God. This guy, this guy is not going to leave you alone. You know who will, people. You know who will destroy you. Drugs, sex, addictions. Destroy you. You might be sitting here right now destroyed. The Lord won't do that. And interestingly enough, he's sitting right there with, him, with you. Call out. Call out. If you're not a believer and you want to know what that joy, what that joy joy is like, joy joy, big J's, capital J's, you want to know what that joy joy is like, call out. Help my unbelief, Lord. I want to. I want you in my heart. Call out. Confess. Repent. Ask for forgiveness. To run these back. The powerful prayers of Paul was a sermon today. Point A, praise changes your outlook. Point B, when you have a song, you can sing it anywhere. Point C, praise brings God's intervention. Point D, your prayer can become a praise. Point E, praise always. And point F, praise with your whole heart and then finally that was the end of the sermon beautiful right we broke out into worship song once again the woman in front of me broke out in full dance full dance she had her children little boy maybe about nine nine or ten mom and dad just kind of were embracing him from the back they had some, I don't know if it was a sister or a cousin. She went over there. Tell me why old girl did a flip. Did a flip in the church. Nobody even batted an eye. She did a flip because why? That's her praise. Can we say another thing? Let's quit policing people's praise. Quit policing people's praise just to carry on the alliteration. If you don't like how somebody's praising, you you could close your eyes. Or you could ask the Lord, maybe you may look at my heart, Lord. Maybe I wanna, maybe I wanna be flipping. And I'll and I'll and, and, and I'm I'm big in the booty. I'm big in the booty and I can't flip. So I'm gonna hate on her because she did a flip. So we're like that. We're funny creatures. It's not that she's doing something wrong by flipping. You're big in the booty. Or me. I'm grown. I can't be out here flipping. Why am I going to hate on the young young lady? She's 20 and she can flip. I can't. And she's wrong for it. Come on now. Quit policing people's praise. Amen. And point it out when you see somebody else doing that. Lord, we love to hate on somebody. Anyway, that was uh, my experience at Revive Church in Missoula, Montana. It was pleasurable. I will be back. Certainly. I will be back. That's my honest church review. No lies told over here. I cannot wait to be back. Not only that, they sponsor um, the Hope Rescue Mission. You can check that out. And they have the City Foods Ministries. I did a video on that. You can find it in the Community Connections playlist. Uh, City Foods Food Bank. I went there, I don't know, eight months ago, something like that. This was good. Who am I? I am 3 Plus Key, your favorite social worker. Always and forever encouraging you to pursue the smile. Okay. By prioritizing these three things and in this order, the Lord your physical health, and persistent education. 
I want you to keep smiling, baby. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, you've been listening to me this long. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I will talk to you later.